So, if you haven't heard, HBO's Velma just came out. And that's all I have to say about Velma. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, the show is, how do I say this nice? Bad, it's bad. I genuinely went into this trying to give it a chance. I know there are a lot of people online that are really tearing into the show for some really nasty reasons. And so I was 100% willing to defend it. And then we get this. She was the rare that did not deserve to be murdered. This version of Velma as a character is just deeply unlikable. I can't tell if that's an intentional choice and if we're supposed to watch her grow or anything, but something about the way the show is presented makes me think that it's not. The entire concept is so detached from anything Scooby-Doo related and what makes those characters special. And it seems like the show was an entirely different thing until it had the brand slapped onto it for recognizability. This show, which is a raunchy and mature comedy aimed at adults, for some reason is set in high school where all of the characters are canonically 15 years old. And that's such a weird choice because Scooby-Doo is not really like a high school thing. It never really was. I mean, yeah, they're young, sure, but Fred's driving around in a van. They've always been like more of a college age thing, if anything. I can only assume it's because Mindy Kaling is obsessed with this idea that she was unpopular in high school and all the pretty girls were mean to her. And you can't really tell that story in college because college isn't really like that. Hey Liz, how's the telescope? I don't know, Kelsey, how's your mom's pill addiction? What are you talking about? I was a nerd. The first season isn't over yet. As of recording this, there's only the first four episodes out, but from what we've seen so far, the only thing that's carrying the show is the art style and the animation department. I really like how a lot of the characters look, the creature designs of Velma's hallucinations, while a strange story plot are really fun and really creepy. And there's a ton of visual gags that are just genuinely really funny. But then despite this, the show throws this line out. You know what 420 is, right? Um, yeah, it's code for adults who still watch cartoons. Which I'm gonna be honest, what does that mean? What is the what is the joke there? I I really tried to like understand it. Are they trying to say that like like stoners watch cartoons? Is that the joke? It feels like a direct insult to the viewer and to the animators and to the medium of animation as a whole. There's not even a bit there. I'm like like what is the point? And then you contrast the release of this show with the hottest movie on the internet right now. <laughs> I am Puss in Boots. I am no one's lap cat. I am not joking when I say this. Puss in Boots The Last Wish is quite possibly the greatest animated movie I've ever seen, especially from a big budget Western studio like DreamWorks. The sequel to a 12 year old Shrek spinoff had no reason to be this good. It instead delivered with gorgeous visuals, an incredible score, amazing action set pieces, fantastic voice performances, a terrifying villain, and a story that's so deeply real and human and relatable. And it's just, oh my God, if you have haven't watched this movie. I know everybody's talking about it. I know it's like the big hype thing and you might think it's overhyped. It's not. It's really fucking good. The movie takes some stylistic cues from Into the Spider-Verse, but it never feels like it's ripping it off. And instead it forms an identity of its own. It's a very funny movie. Believe me, it's very funny. You're an irredeemable monster. Oh, oh, what took you so long, idiot? But it knows when to take a pause and portray serious subject matters seriously. I know the scene of the panic attack is all over your timeline lately, but there's a reason for that. The story is fundamentally about this character who claims to be fearless, coming to terms with how long he has left to live. And it shows that true bravery isn't your ability to take down giants or win sword fights, but to face those fears with the help of the ones you love. It treats you as a viewer with respect and it lets itself be nuanced and emotional instead of constantly trying to undercut itself for a joke to keep you entertained. And it does all this with a main character that's just a furry version of the movie that got Batman's parents killed. The movie's gonna get a lot of people into animation, I just know it, and if you're an animator or an, any kind of artist trying to break into the industry and build a following, it's super important to have a portfolio of content in your work that you have complete control over. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Squarespace. Squarespace lets you showcase your videos and animations effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, drive sales, and show off your work on a platform that you design. With a ton of great templates to choose from, Squarespace makes it super easy to put a website together even without any coding experience. Present your videos from YouTube, Vimeo, Animoto, all on your Squarespace site. Squarespace has powerful blogging tools to share stories, photos, videos, and updates. Categorize, share, and schedule your posts to make your content work for you. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash troyboy17 to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And so if you compare Puss in Boots, this movie that was targeted at children and yet still has all these complex themes and ideas and respects the viewer, to Velma, 
an adult series that's essentially making fun of the viewer for watching it is kind of telling of the industry and the state of how people view animation as a whole. In the past few months, new leadership at Warner Brothers has led to a mass cancellation of projects at HBO Max, even projects that are fully finished. The Batgirl live action movie was the first and one of the most notable, but since then so many more have been axed and animation has been a primary target of this. Scoob, Holiday Haunt, Close Enough, Summer Camp Island, even Batman the Caped Crusader, which was a spiritual sequel to Batman the Animated Series and was a surefire guaranteed hit, all were shut down and either forced to find a new home or were entirely lost to the void that is digital streaming and corporate tax write-offs. And this bled over into other companies like Netflix and even Disney canceling The Owl House and potentially canceling Spider-Man freshman year. Thousands of people lost their jobs, lost years of their lives, all because animation wasn't deemed profitable by one guy in a suit. And it's not just a corporate thing, but even on a consumer level. A lot of the discussions surrounding the Obi-Wan Kenobi show on Disney Plus was people wanting the character of Darth Maul to appear and retell a story that had already been done in an episode of Star Wars Rebels. I understand that Maul is a great character and I really do love him and we want to see more of him, but that story specifically was done so phenomenally and perfectly that it's the best episode of that entire series and probably one of the best things that's come out of Star Wars in the past decade. In fact, Star Wars as a franchise was basically carried by its animated shows for years, whether it's Rebels or Clone Wars or Gendy Tartakovsky's incredible miniseries. And so then for so much of the discussion to be wanting to retell the same story now just in real life feels like people disregarding it solely because it was animated. I don't think that that's like an intentional reason why you specifically wanted to see it if you're watching this, because I know there are a lot of people that just want to see lightsaber fights and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But it was very clearly an undercurrent in a lot of the discussion. Uh, Star Wars feds, uh, uh, don't be mean to me in the comments, please. In general, the entertainment industry, specifically in America and the Western world, has a fundamental disrespect for animation as an art form and as a medium. And the primary reason for this is the belief that animation is only for children. Animation is a medium in which to tell a story. It's not specific to one group or demographic based purely on being animated. Now, there are a lot of animated properties that are aimed at kids. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the same way that not all superhero movies are made for kids, the same goes for animation. There are plenty of animated series and properties, some of them come out in the past few years and have been incredibly successful successful that are clearly for a mature audience. Invincible being a perfect example. That show's animated and is honestly the only way the comic story could have been adapted and done justice. Does it mean it's for kids? No! No, it does not. Same with Del Toro's Pinocchio. This movie was a passion project of his for years, something he's been trying forever to get made, a love letter to the art of animation, and Phil Tippett's Mad God. This gorgeous display of stop motion craftsmanship from probably the best person in the industry was more than 30 years in the making. These are some of the best animated stories ever told, fueled by love and craft and passion. And there's absolutely no way that you can claim that they are in any way meant for children. It's a movie not for kids, but kids can see it with you. If you explain it to them. And the thing is, even the animated properties that are aimed at kids, that's not necessarily a bad thing, and that doesn't make them any less valuable. Animation as an art form breeds imagination. By the nature of how it's created, it allows for anything to be possible. Any world, any scenario, any story can be told without needing extra sets or filming locations or CGI budget. It just takes a pen and paper, or an Apple pencil and an iPad, or a mouse and a animation, so you get what I'm trying to say. For children specifically, that imagination and that impossibility is super important. It allows young people to ask questions, think outside the box, open up their mind to possibilities and ideas that otherwise wouldn't be possible. And it fundamentally breeds creativity and that's really necessary in my opinion for a lot of kids. This potential is great for kids, but I truly believe that it can do that for anybody at any age. And that's not to mention the animated movies that are supposedly children's movies also have adults in the audience too. The parents have to want to take their kids to the movies and if they have a good experience, then that's a win for everybody. And they go see other movies that are from that company or from that studio. That's just how the movies work. And that's why we get things like adult jokes in children's movies or something like Soul, which proposes these deep philosophical questions about life that sent me into an emotional spiral from a company where the CEO openly says animation is just for children. And did we all just forget that animation saved the entertainment industry during 2020? When the entire world was on lockdown and studios weren't able to film new content for their streaming services that made them so much money, animators were the only people who were able to keep the industry thriving and alive during that entire time. And still, less than three years later, those same studios shut down and canceled those very same projects that kept their company afloat. Recently, we lost a legend. Kevin Conroy passed away at the age of 66. For years, Kevin voiced Batman in various video games and animated series, and through his performance and through the stories that were told with his version of the character, became THE Batman for an unfathomably massive amount of people. And he forever will be the best 
Batman. All of those people were changed and touched by his performance and by the animation that allowed it to exist. Without animation, there would be millions of people all over the world who wouldn't have their Batman, wouldn't have a Superman or a Spider-Man or any of the foundational characters that are a huge part of today's culture. And that's not even to mention original animated series that had a huge impact on me, like Avatar The Last Airbender. I know I've kind of gotten off the topic of Puss in Boots and Velma and all that, and it seems like that one line of dialogue that doesn't make any sense is just eating away at me and made me make this whole video. And in a way, it kind of is. For an animated series on a streaming service that just axed dozens and dozens of other animated properties to try and make fun of animation in the viewer by being self-aware, meanwhile the animators and artists on the show are working desperately just to keep their jobs and not meet that same fate to the point of carrying the entire show is almost patronizing in a way. And so you have this show with its nudity and its raunchy humor and its violence that's supposedly for adults and it treats you like you're a child. And you have this movie with its visuals and its themes and all the love that's poured into every frame of its creation that's supposedly for children and treats you like an adult. And to me, that kind of says a lot about the industry and the people that make it. Also, what does she mean by 420? It doesn't make, it's a code? What does that mean? Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you liked this video, push the like button and subscribe. Special thanks to Alter the Sting, Already Done It, Cabbage Boy, Cassidy Bond, Chicken McDoofus, Connor Langell, Cosmic Tragedy, Eden Kenna, Iron Ninja, Jonah, Corey's Not Fresh, Lime Spice XL, Logan Triplet Films, Simply Dan, Tim Newfeld, Troy Says Bio Erasure is Gay, Tyler Goodrich, Yush Kapoor, Zachary Stonebreaker, Zero to Hero 148, and ZZ Toasty for being spectacular fanboys on my Patreon. This is Metroid Boy 17 coming at you live. Be responsible and I'll see you around.